Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Model Bench, and this is part 8 now of this ICM Sky Crane build, and uh, what a lovely kit it's turning out to be. So um, when I left you in part 7, we got the cockpit fitted onto the main superstructure, the main fuselage, and we've got the, the glazing all in, it's just roughly covered with masking tape, but uh, yeah, we've got it all painted using the brilliant masks from our scale kit, absolutely awesome. They are a two. So, um, when I left you, got the cockpit fitted and I had it all clamped up and then I went in with some sprue goo into the, into the joints to give it some strength. We've got the plastic card in there to, to you know, back up these, these uh, joints here. So everything's looking good. Um, when you're doing this, make sure that stays nice and flush. You don't want to step in there. So we've got a nice flush finish on both sides of there. And the way I check it's flush, I get a rule, get the end of a rule, put it between the rivets, and just check it's flush. And if it needs to be moved, even now, like 12, 14 hours after that's gone on, I can still move it. So, um, so there we go. So now it's time to close all this up and fit this cockpit roof. Don't forget to paint the inside of the cockpit roof grey in that forward area. Um, I have done a little bit of fettling. I've just gone over... I've just gone over this structure here and sanded out any little lumps and bumps. You can see I managed to get a bit of sprue goo on there. So just sanded out any lumps and bumps, any little bits and pieces where it joins, just to make sure the roof goes down nicely onto there. Um, I've also had to remove some plastic from here. The roof section, whether it's me or whether it's the kit, I don't know. It's probably me. This section was very slightly wider here than I wanted it to be. It was actually sitting up. Because it's it's fitting on like a like a chamfer, so if you can imagine, this is the top of the side. Here's the side going down here, and then the top comes along here, and it's, it fits like that. So if it's too wide, it sort of pushes it up, and you end up with a with a kind of step like that, exaggerated. Um, so you want it to sit there nice and flush, be level at the back. There is actually a panel line there, so you don't worry too much about that. But here we need this to fit perfectly because we're going to have to do sanding because that is one panel there, that's that's not a seam line. So we've got lots of that to do again, which I won't do on camera. I won't bore you with that. But basically what I'm going to do is fit this roof section. So my plan is to come along with the white glue and just put some white glue. It's not white glue as in PVA, it's just the white Tamiya. And I'm going to put some on here just to help me tack this down. Just, in fact, I'll put some on there as well, I think. I'll put some on that flange. There. We can just drop this down in. Hold it down. And that should keep it down in position. I hope I haven't just got glue on there. No, it's the tape. Whew, I thought it was sticky. I was thinking, no, I've got glue on there. I ruined the rivet detail. So, that's gone down nicely there. So what we can do now, now that that's done, we, this is a um, this is the box for my remote from my phone. It's worked out really handy. So that can go down in there. I can get some extra thin. I'll just put a drop. Be careful where we put in it because we don't want to. I've got a bloody cold again, guys, and it's caused my eyes to water, and I can't see 100% what I'm bloody doing here. Okay, so that's that done. So what I'm going to do now is grab my tape. Now the glue's sort of had a long enough to ooze. To, to dry off. You don't want to do this when the glue is wet because the glue will capillary under the tape. We just hold that down there. I'm going to put some up the front here to hold it down because we've got that glue on the inside. I'll hold that down there. We don't put glue in here with that tape because it will capillary under the tape. And then I'm going to turn this around and repeat over here and get this back end glued down. Just going to put some cement into there and let it capillary in. 
so into that corner there. And as you can see, I'll show you in a second, you need to be really up with what you're doing here because as you can see, I can push it down there, I can push it in there, I can get all sorts of different sh things going on by manipulating it. And I've sort of kind of put too much glue in there to soften it all up a bit to get it to all sort of match. Tape off of there. Take that down there. There we go. So that's going to dry nicely, and I'm just going to same as the other side. Put some tape on the front to hold that down because it's glued on the inside. I don't think this tape wants to stay on here really. So as long as it stays on long enough to let that glue just gel off, that'll be fine. So I'm going to repeat doing that all the way down, get that glued down, and then I'll be back. So, many hours later, uh, this is on. I've done the seams, and I've gone over to Mr. Surfacer to seam check it. Mr. Surfacer Grey is a fantastic seam checker. It'll show up anything. You know, even if there's a bit of hair stuck in the primer or something, it'll show it up. As we can see, we've got a half decent seam, but you can see when we find something to point with, you can see where are we? Here we have a line. You can see there's a line there, and then there's a bit of a line in the middle of there, which I think will sand out. And there's also some lines around here, and there's one up here. So I'm going to fill them, and the one I'm going to do, I'm not using Mr. Surfacer to fill them because. As I said before with all this under here, when you go in with Mr. Surfacer and do stuff like this, it shrinks back. And then also, if you put a nice coat of primer on it, it will actually shrink it in again because it eats into it. So, you know, it's, um, I find it much better with areas like this that are so difficult to do. It's best to use super glue. So I'm using the black. This is the VMS Black Thin Super Glue. And what I'm going to do is just dab it in into that seam. It's kind of thickened up a touch because it used to run along much like a wash, but it doesn't seem to do that anymore. Um, and I've also got a bit up here, haven't I? So let's get in there. Now in these bits between the rivets, what we can do is get a clean cotton bud and just wipe. Yeah, I think I've wiped it all out, that's the trouble. But what we want to do is try and get some in there and then wipe it away from the rivets. If I could just get it in there just to, just like that. And then maybe I could just rub it when it started to go off or something. But um, yeah, it's uh, for me it works so much better than Mr. Servicer because it doesn't get, the, the gap doesn't come back when you put your primers on and stuff. Um, to be honest, since I found this VMS Black stuff, Super Glue has become my new favourite filler. I do all my uh, ejector pin marks with it and everything. It's like one minute there's nothing on there and the next minute there'll be too much. There we go. So that in between the rivets, I think what I have to do is try and scrape it or something when it's dry. But, uh, it's not the easiest of jobs, but without a lot of slide mode, I'm not quite sure I'm, I mean how else they could have done it. They could have made this piece here as one and dropped it on but it would have meant slide molding and then you would have had a, a seam from the slide molding so you know you you bugger if you do and you bugger if you don't basically there was really no other way to do it um it would have been a lot easier if i had recessed rivets but then everybody would say why has it got recessed rivets so you, you you can't win especially not with me so um there we go but there we are, that's those little bits done that I could see. And I think once it's had a coat of paint, it's going to look absolutely fine. I'm not worried about the gaps here because there's a couple of pieces that go on over that. They cover that up. So I'm not worried about those gaps in those vertical lines. But you can see this here has come out great. This here has come out great. The joint underneath, it's lovely. So uh, yeah, really happy with that, how it's come out. But uh, I'm going to let that dry. Do a bit more work. I need to get some more glue just into that 
area there. Just to kind of hide that line. Really, really difficult to do. But hey ho. Right. So there's also, I can see something there as well. There's a line. There's a line in there. So there we are. Right, we will let that sort of dry off, give it a sand, and then I'll, I'll probably get another coat of primer. And then I'll come back. And there we go, guys. Um, it's not perfect, but it's good enough. Uh, you have all the engine detail and air intakes and everything up here. So it's got, a lot of it's going to be sort of, not covered up, but sort of shadowed. So, you know, it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect, but as you can see, it's not bad. And this grey primer, remember if you're doing this, this grey primer shows up absolutely everything. Which is why when you see like on the Zuki Mori stand at uh, Scale Model World, you'll see, you know, all their um, little sub-assemblies, engines, and they're always sprayed in like a, a matte grey primer because it makes all the details pop. And that's why they do it. So the little errors you may see there, you probably wouldn't see under the green paint. So we shall see how it looks when it's all done. We can always correct it afterwards because it's all there. But um, I'm happy with that. It's all together. And uh, now we've got to move on with something else. But I don't quite know what. I'm sort of... <coughs> I'm kind of stuck with what to do here because if I fit all the clear parts on the front, chances are I'm going to scratch them, scrape them, crack them, knock them off, whatever. And if I put all the detail on, then I'm sort of... I'm going to have to wrestle with that front to fit and I'm going to have all the detail on there so I don't know what to do. One thing I might do is look at everything that goes under here, like pipe work and stuff, and do that now because obviously once the rotor head and everything is on, you don't want to be sitting on its back. But there is a lot of detail that goes on the bottom of here, like antenna and stuff, that's just going to get knocked off. So it's going to be a really difficult way of doing the kit. If you look at the instructions, they kind of have you build up the unit like I've got here and then they go straight into starting to add all this detail so I suppose I could start adding the detail on the sides and the bits and pieces like this I don't really want to add the undercarriage yet because I fear it'll get broken um, and then we've got all this stuff like this going on so I suppose we could get on and do do a lot of this I'm a bit concerned about fitting that tail rotor because I keep banging that tail into the camera so or into my lights so um, we shall see but uh Stick around and I'll show you what I do and you can tell me I'm right or wrong. I don't know. Right, see you in a minute. Okay, so moving forward. Um, I'm sorry if I cough. I've got a stinking cold and it's really doing me head in. Um, but we're going to carry on with this anyway. My eyes are bloody streaming so I could hardly see what I'm doing. But anyway, um, if you remember I mentioned in part 7 this clear uh, windscreen section on my kit is all distorted. Um, as you can see, if you look at the if you look at the cross section or the shape here, it's like practically straight. And if you look at where it's got to go, it's actually, you know, like a like a, a three-stage curve. So it's it's actually like come out of the mold too quick and it's flattened. So basically what we need to do is fit it in there. And as you can see, the sides are hanging out a mile there. Okay, so what we've got to do is pull the sides in and when we pull the sides in it all comes back to shape now the other problem I've had with this is actually fitting it um, the clear part has a large radius in this corner in here and the actual plastic kit part is a sharp corner so what I've done I've put a bit of a radius on there and I've removed the radius from in that corner the other thing I notice is when you put it down um, it was sitting way too high. Um, it was there was a big step up here, okay. So there was a big step up there where it's sitting too high, and there was a big gap down here because it wasn't down low enough. So I have literally sanded probably a good couple of millimeters off of this here, of this area here, to get it to go down. So it now, when I fit it on now and pull the sides in, you can see it fits really really nice. But it's taken a hell of a lot of work to get there. I was in a private hangout last night with Paul and Chris. And, um, 
probably three hours sat there fettling and messing around with this to get it to fit. Now, this is one of the problems when you've got these multi-part assemblies. It's like you've got this part here, you've got this part here, this part here, this part here, you've got all the roof section in here. That's one of the issues you, 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 you may find. So this could be my mistake, but all of this fit together so well. I, I think the biggest issue is the fact that my kit part is flattened. It's come out of the mould too soon or whatever. So, um, but as you can see there, well, I put some pressure in the side. It's beautiful. But if I let the sides go, you can see it comes away here. It comes away there. It goes straight across here. It's not fitting properly there. So it needs to be held in place and glued, which is going to be a complete and utter nightmare trying to do that. So um, I don't know how we're going to get there, but we will get there. I think it's going to be the same as it was with this horrible panel here. I think it's going to be a case of little dabs of super glue to sort of lock it in place and then go around with the extra thin to weld it in place but certainly you're not going to help you're not going to hold this in here with like crystal clear and stuff like that it's just not going to hold it so um but i think what i'm going to do is clamp the sides to get it correct and then glue the top in this area here let that go off and then we'll remove the clamps and hopefully the sides will stay in or i could perhaps clamp them up here or something um in fact that may even work better if I clamp it there but it's, it's just a case of trial and error as I say this could only be my kit I doubt it it's come out of the mold too quick it's, it's it's flattened I doubt if I'm the only one that's got this problem but certainly my other kit doesn't have it so we shall see but um anyway there we go I'm going to persevere with this and then I'll come back and I'll tell you what I've done because it's going to be like watching paint dry watching me glue this in place Right, just I just want to show you, um, this is mad. You can see I've got it all clamped here. I've had to clamp the, the middle here, this one here, to get this shape on the front. I've had to clamp the sides in to get the whole thing. I've got the top tape back hard to the roof, and then I've got tape here pulling it down into the bottom. So, and all I've glued is this area here. So hopefully it's going to stay. I've used Tammy Extra Thin. I've put loads in there so we should get a really good strong weld. I'm glad. I'm so glad they put the framing around the windows and it's not, you know, the framing isn't on the part because then we would have an issue. But um, I'm even going to put some more in there, I think, just to make sure. And I might even go in with some super glue and hope and pray it doesn't fog inside. If we can get enough glue in there and get it sealed up. Um just want to get it get it welded in solid because it's going to be under such an amount of stress because it's you know it's 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 not that difficult to push in but the whole the whole thing is just doing it just wants to be like this you know and I'm trying to hold it like that and it wants to be like that so yeah I think when we get the doors on as well it'll be glued down there that'll be good but um anyway it's uh it's a nightmare guys but as I say it's probably Partly my fault due to the assembly of all the different parts because there's so many different parts that it's actually attaching to that have all come together and also my part was was flattened so um but what I'm trying to show you is that even though your parts flattened it you can still make it fit if you are fairly new to the hobby uh, I perhaps I would suggest getting in touch with ICM and asking for a replacement sprue I don't know um, but uh, yeah my sprue is definitely distorted. It definitely came out of the tool too quick. Was put down. Another sprue's put on top of it. So I I don't know. But um, the same happened with the Airfix One Twenty Fourth Hellcat. Some people's fuselages were just splat. You know, instead of having two fuselages halves like that, they, they were kind of like that. Just they had to really pull them in. So uh, you know, it, it it's injection molding, and that's the way it goes. So uh, anyway, and let's not forget, guys. Let's not forget. This thing has been developed and manufactured in a bloody war zone. You know, I mean, it's amazing we've got it here at all. So uh, thank you, ICM, for that. And thank you for sending me this one. Anyway, um, I'm going to let that go off now, take Jess for a walk. And uh, and then uh, I'll come back. I'll probably put some super glue in there, as I say, just to give it an extra bit of bite. See you in a minute. At last, many hours later, <laughs> this has taken about 10 hours with the drying and everything. But we're there. We've actually got it all glued in all the way around. What I did, I put spots of super glue in here on the end of a knife blade and then just held it in place and that tacked it. Um, same up here. 
and it's gone together beautifully. Now the doors I have here and I think they fit wonderfully. One of them, the uh, left side, I have actually just sanded a bit off the off the outside edges and uh, they will fit in in there just like so really nicely they just click in there you go that's in so that's how the doors fit so they look really really good um really happy with that the other side fits perfectly without any sanding or anything just pops in so they pop it underneath that drip rail at the top there as you can see fits in there absolutely beautifully so uh really really nice so now we've got that done as you can see i've put tape on there to protect the glazing from being scratched because we have a lot of work to do underneath on the sides on top and everything the next thing i want to do is get the areas where i'm going to be putting stuff like here i think what i might do is just prime this whole area in black um, because we've got lots and lots of stuff to go on as you can see in the instructions here there's lots of bits and pieces of pipe work and, and stuff going on you can see there on that side and then got bits and pieces going on the other side there's loads more going all over the thing you can see we've got all these separate rods so um, I think what I'll do is prime all that area all up around here black ready for the assembly and then we'll have I, what I don't want to do this is why I do this I don't want to be able to see grey plastic you know you may not be able to get green paint in there or whatever and also the idea with the black it, it's sort of almost like a pre-shade so that when you spray over the pipes you want to try and leave some of the black just visible behind and it gives you a, a sort of pre-shade a dark a dark area so um I think I'll get on and do that and then uh, and then I'll come back and we'll look at what we're going to do next and there we go, after a bit more work, all the glaze is done, I've given it a clean off. Bloody typical, got a piece of dust on the inside there. So I can maybe tap it and make that come off, I don't know, but what a... Argh, never mind. Um, so yeah, so there we go, that's all the doors all fitted in. I've gone around and you can see just where I put the, the cement, I'll go over, well, I've forgot the mask, I'll just go over that with very lightly with the sponge, just smooth that out. But uh, no, really, really happy with how this has come out. In fact, I'm looking at it now, it looks like that front door has actually popped out at the top, which is a bit of a pain. So I'm going to have to turn the camera off and get that sorted. Okay, so there we go. I've, I've popped it back in, put some more glue in there. And uh, yeah, we've got a... It's a lot better now. I suppose the doors wouldn't have been perfect fitting anyway, but uh, they do have a bit of a step at the front. But it's very difficult to see with this clear plastic. So uh, maybe I should have painted the doors first before I put them in, then I'd be able to see what I was doing. But luckily, found that before the glue was fully hard. I was able to put some cement in there, let it capillary around, and then break the joint and just push it back in. But uh, it wants to pop back out. Probably, um, <clears throat> again, because my clear parts were all distorted, probably the doors have flattened out or something where they should be more curved or whatever. Or maybe they're curved and they should be flatter, I don't know. But uh, it just, it's like that corner just keeps wanting to push itself out. So. I've glued it in like that, clamped it, and now we can wait for that to dry. The next thing I'm going to do is mask off all the glazing with this masking tape because it's not very tacky. I detack it first anyway. Um, and then we can get on with the rest of this painting and everything I need to do then. And then we can get on with the rest of the build. And uh, I think it's going to probably come together quite fast now because we've got so much already built up. And uh, we've got lots of little weeblies to go on, but it's going to be a fun build, I think. So um, stay tuned. Okay, so moving on, we've got all this black paint on now and I've got the, the clear parts taped up. So moving along now, um, looking at all this pipe, work, we've got this assembly here going on with these little bits and pieces. And as I said, I've got everything painted black. But we, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a dodgy throat, guys. Excuse me, I keep coughing and sniffing about this. These pipes here as well, um, what we need to do is make sure we get the seams removed. Um, and then we paint the back of them before we put them on. Um, I, you don't have to, but it's just something I'm really fussy about because when it comes to, if they're fitted, you've got to airbrush it in this angle and that angle. And it's it's easier to just to get some black paint on there now and get them shadowed. But I love what OCM have done here. You can see they've got these, they're attached to these sprues. So what we can do is just cut them off. In fact, I, I'll know which one is which one by the length because I think they're all different lengths, aren't they? 
Yes, so they're different lengths. So we've got 116, 108, uh, 132, which is there, which I'm going to cut. I'll just remove it. 132. And it's worth taking the time to get these, the seams removed, because they look really, really nice if you, um, if you sort of get the seams off. If you leave the seams on there, that's when it starts to look like a model rather than the real thing. So that's those four there. And what I like, I like the way they've done this because with that on there, I can easily hold this and then just do some seam removal and just scrape the seams away, which is uh, easy as pie. And just do some light sanding on there. And that's great for holding it for doing that one side and then we'll cut it off and do the other side. So I'll get that done and then I'll be back. Right, next day, here we are. I um, already mentioned, we've got the black paint on there. Got all those parts off the sprue and cleaned up. And quite a job, there's quite a lot of seams on there. One bit of advice I will give you, be very, very careful here. When you look at the back of this part, I don't think you're gonna see it on the camera. But when you look on the back of this part, it looks like there's flash around the edge or like a seam. But it's not. It's what they've done is they've moulded sort of half round. So it kind of looks like it's a, a tube rather than it running into a straight piece at the back. So just be careful. I don't know if you can see it on there, but it's um, it's it's like a it looks like a mould seam. Don't go scraping it off because it's it's supposed to be like that. And um, yeah, seams all the way along here. And then you've got the seams on the vertical bits to clean up. These little parts here, seams all the way along. As you can see, I've painted them black so that they don't have the grey shadows behind them. I don't want to risk any grey behind. Painted the inside of that one there, black. And uh, and there we go. These little bits here are going to go on now. Painted inside those black. Obviously the areas where they are going are black. So looking at the instructions. Here is a step 42. We have those two bits going on. We have G16, which I've got off here. We have G106, which I've got off there. All cleaned up and everything. And good to go. One thing I will say, a um, bit of a sort of negative on ICM, perhaps designers need to think more carefully in future. I've noticed with a lot of this, these sprue nibs are in the most obvious place. So, for example, on this piece here, this piece here is a fairing that covers the end of those rods, and it goes there like that. And the sprue connection is there, right on the top. And it runs over that edge as well so you've got a kind of you can probably see it on there it's sort of it's flush here and then it runs over so you've got to clean up into that corner and sand it and get it all nice and you know it it would have been so much nicer if they put it on the bottom or even on the end but you know this one here they actually got it on the bottom but i've noticed with a lot of the engine parts as well like on the engine intakes here um they're obviously they go in a certain position because they've got a, a, a piece going in there. But the sprue connection is right on the top. They could have put it right on the bottom quite easily. Um, so that's one to look you know, look forward in, in, in if you're watching this ICM. Because, I mean, it's, it's, it's not a major complaint. But it just makes life a lot easier for the modeler if the sprue connection point is, is, is hidden. Um, and, and it's not causing you any issues, you know. Not causing the designer or the manufacturer any issues. So, um, let's get these bits and pieces on. So we've got here, we've got 41 going on this side and 40 going on that side. I don't actually think you can get this wrong because they're, as you can see, they're like a, a wedge shape. And then you've got the, the varying shape there. So they sort of sit, is this right for this side? Yeah. They sort of sit in there, like so. So what I'm going to do is with a sponge I'm just going to come along and remove the paint from the top of those bits there just to try and get a better let's bring this in here just to try and get a better bond so we can slip that onto there I believe these are the supports for the air filters so that's going to go on there we should drag, grab some extra thin and just run that down there and run some down there and we want them to be fairly strong because, as I say, they're going to be supporting those air filters. That's upside down noise, you pillock. To 
today is Saturday, Saturday the 15th is it? Yeah, 15th of April 2023. Don't forget, I don't know when this video is going out, but uh, on a Saturday we have, on the Plastic Monkey channel, we have the, the Live at the Bench, where you'll have Sue there doing the chat, and you'll have Paul, Chris and myself at the bench building. What we building, who knows? There we go, right. So that's those on. And then we've got this little piece here, which is gonna plop on there. I've already removed some paint from there. And what I'm doing, I'm putting the glue on afterwards, guys, so that I don't get glue oozing out. Okay, so that's that one on there. So that's that done. You can see that block there, and this one here, they're, the engines are actually staggered to keep them in line with the torque. Uh, the torque um, bias on the um, on the main rotor head, so they've got that correct. So, thank you for that ICM. You've done a great job there. Um, much better than the Trumpeter Mi twenty four or Mi twenty four, should I say? Which is awful in that regard. Right, what I'm going to do here is put a drop of extra thin in there. You can see it's going to dissolve that paint, and then I'm going to stick this on quickly. We don't want too much in there because we don't want to lose out. And then what we can do is just on this end, we just tap it and that'll get some in there as well. So that's that in place. So, before your very eyes, we've done step 42. Now let's have a look at step 44. I've already done these, these, these frames here, built up. Again, painted the inside of them black. So, um, we've got G17 going on. So let's turn our helicopter around. So we've got G17 which is here again. I've sprayed the back of it black and that is going to go into that triangular wedge there or triangular recess should I say. That's just going to sit in there make sure we're not grabbing anything that's just been glued. I'm not sure that's in properly actually. There we go, that's better. So put a drop of glue in there, a drop of glue in there, that to us. And then leave it. And then we've got this big piece here, F20, and then those two pieces going over the top. So we've got this big piece here, F20, you can see I've already painted it, I've already scraped the paint away. So this is going to go, I need to scrape the paint away on the top as well. Just take some of that away and take some away from there so that I can glue it because we don't want any gaps there, we want it to look good. So, and I also need to get in there and remove some paint from there. There we go. Now, this is going to go on just like so. And I have test fitted it, it fits beautifully. There we go, hear that click in. So that's lovely, that's on. Right. Yeah, it's got a slight bow on it. So what I'm gonna do is give it a little bit of manipulation to try and get it a bit flatter. There we go. And then that can go in like that. And there we go. That's that in like that. It's just going to sit there like that. And it's still got a bow in it. Right, I'm going to get this bow sorted out, get this glued in, and then I'll come back. Right, so that's on. I uh, managed to get the bow out of it, got it all glued down lovely. Just put a drop of cement in each slot first, pushed it down, and then I've got it underneath. So just put a dab in there just to hold it, and I've made sure I've glued those pipes there so that they uh, they sort of blend in as a plate goes over there, so it's going to look like it goes into a cover. Uh, so that's very nicely done. Right, now, these two parts here, 43, as I say, we've built them up, we're going to fit them. They fit absolutely beautifully. Um, you will hear them, the 
just clip in like that and they fit so well they stay there on their own so really really pleased with that um, I think I'm going to get in there with my little pointy tool just scrape some of that paint away you don't have to do this guys you don't have to scrape paint away because extra thin is quite hot and it will get in there and sort itself out but um, if you can it's a good idea to do it so we will also remove paint from there just to help just to give us a little helping hand this bloody cold is doing my head in. I'm sorry if you hear me sniff but, uh, So I'm going to put a drop of glue under there, inside there. Oops. The trouble with this thing now it's getting quite unwieldy. Drop of glue in there and a drop in there. There we are. Just hold that so it stays down. That's so I'm going to give that a very, very gentle clamp because it looks like it has a slight twist in it, which I've probably done when I've stuck it on the blue tack to paint it and then I've pulled it off. It's probably given it a little twist, so that can just be clamped before, before it dries. What I'll do, I'll just add a drop of cement in there and there to make sure it stays down. And then we'll do the same with this one. Drop this one in place upside down, no. As you can see, just clips into place. And then I can add a drop of glue under there, inside there, inside there, and if I can get up in there, under there. Whoops, that was not supposed to happen. Once again, no, that one's okay, it doesn't need to be clamped, but I'm going to put a clamp on it anyway, just in case. Because having all this thing, all this painted black, it makes things difficult for me to see as I'm bloody blind as a bat anyway. Right, here we go. So that's all of that done now. That can be left to dry. So we have now done that one, 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 and that one. All done. And those there are on as well. Right. Tires are done. Here are the main tires. Um, I think somebody will probably come out with some resin with flat spots on them, whatever. So they're done. And then we've got, we've, we've done all this already, as you know, we've got the undercarriage legs to build up. And you can see here building up the undercarriage legs and then fitting them on. We've also got the nose wheel to build up. We've got the nose wheel in here also, which looks very, very nice indeed. So they look really, really nice. Now, there is an issue. There is a major issue here. If we look at these undercarriage legs, because they are accurately designed, Get these sprue nibs off of it because they are designed to scale okay they are quite weak now my concern is with this model sat on these legs being as long as they are you gotta remember they're gonna go up we've got these we've got these parts here that they go up into you can see them on the sprue here Got these here that they go up into so that's going to sit up in there like that okay so that's going to sit in there so basically it's held here look how weak it is and especially with that cut out in there as well and my concern is when you put this down on its legs 
at best it's going to be wobbly, at worst it's going to break. That one doesn't want to go in there. There we go. And we can see, I mean it's just, it's not strong enough. I, I can't see it being strong enough. I really want some aftermarket legs. Um, because, and not white metal, uh, don't get white metal legs, they just, they'll just bend because of the design. We, they need to be um, bronze or, uh, or brass or whatever, not white metal, because that is just not strong enough. It's, they're, they're going to snap. So what I'm going to do is build one of these up and have a look and see just how strong it is. And then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so I've built this up. Um, this is taped together for a reason because I think I'm going to snap this leg and I'm just going to have to uh, get some aftermarket ones. Wink, wink. Um, so basically this is going to go onto here. I'm not sure which side is which, but it's going to fit like that. And then you, you can see it's sort of quite gangly. You can see it's quite long and and it's... Let me take the wheel off because the wheel does not fit very positively at all. Um, but you can see it's very gangly. It's uh, the way it is. And you can just see that that leg... I mean, let's get these bloody clamps off. Those have dried by now. But you can see put this on the bench if I hold that on there you can just see how much it just moves around and already I've noticed the plastic is starting to turn white in that area by that big hole it's just you know if it's sat there on its legs and you come along and spin the rotor or something or you just knock it I'm sure they're going to break um, I think if ever there is a model that needs aftermarket undercarriage I think it's this the other thing is with the nose wheel the nose wheel has a it's made of two parts or the nose leg and it just sits in that recess in there so you've got all the weight of the nose it's just trying to lever that off all the time but also because of the design because it's accurate it's also trying to twist I mean that is just actually broken I've just I've just managed to break that um, so that leg that, that you put the nose wheel on and that is just trying to, you can see I've just broken it. So this really does need aftermarket undercarriage. Um, and I have some on the way. So keep your eyes peeled for a review. That was why I take this together, because I have some under, aftermarket undercarriage on the way. And I will show you in a video, maybe even before this one goes out. So uh, keep your eyes peeled. But um, certainly this undercarriage is... Look at it, it's just not going to do it. It's just not strong enough. So the ICM plastic is beautiful to work with. Yes, it's quite soft. And as a result, that leg being designed to scale, which it has to be, um, is not suitable. One thing I did think about doing, if you, if you want to, what you could do is fit the wheel and you could drill a hole through the wheel into the leg and put like a clear rod or something in there to support it because it's basically where it's on the bend where it's going to break so and this one here I mean I, I didn't intend to but you can see I've just that's just broken so yeah right let's move on all right so the instructions go on um, building up the undercarriage, fitting the undercarriage, fitting the main hook and everything. I don't even have a, a winch in there yet. Um, building up the nose gear and fitting that. And then we've got this little rod up here going on. I don't want to fit that because I keep knocking the back end as it is. So I'm not going to fit that yet. So I think what I will do is get a red sharpie and just make a note of that so I don't forget it. Uh, so here we have all these parts here going on the side which we can do now, which are the ones I just showed you. So let's get those on. Um, so we've got, let's get it turned around. We have some holes up here, three holes up there. We have some holes along here, and we have some holes along here. 
and basically that's where it's all going to fit. So if I tip this out onto here, now we have the longest one at the bottom. Well, for the, the bottom one is actually this one. So let's let's just put that in there. And because the camera's on, it's going to play silly buggers. Oh, please, just go in that bloody hole. Right. Oh, look at this. This is a nightmare. It's always the same when the bloody camera's on. Tell you what, I'm gonna do that bit off camera and then I'll come back. All right, so I finally got that in after a load of wrestling with it. God, it did not want to go in. So that's just a straight pipe. So these here, we've got the longest one at the bottom. Okay, so that's gonna drop into, that's gonna drop into that hole there. And then we've got these three Holes stacked up here you can see two sets of them so that's where these are going to go on top of each other and they're kind of wedged so that will sit like that as you can see they need to be sort of canted up because they, they kind of come away from the fuselage and then we'll just put a drop of glue in there because you want this this lever arm to be sort of parallel with the side of the fuselage so it's kind of stepped up if you like okay so they're like a you can see they're like a wedge now they're on an angle And then the next one is going to go into there. I'm going to put a drop of glue in there first. That's going to go into there. And then this will all sit on top of what's already there, as you can see. So, again, we can put a drop of extra thin in there. And one in there. Just give them a nudge. As you can see, it's all coming together nicely now because it's all sitting on the bottom one. So I'll just put a drop of extra thin, that's too much. Put a drop in there. Drop on there and a drop on there. I might get away with not putting any more on there. But uh, I thought I'd show you this, guys, because it's. When I first looked at it, it's not exactly clear how it all goes. But then when you work it out, you kind of get that, that eureka moment. Oh, I see. Okay, so just remember, they have to be away from the body. These um, crank arms here need to be parallel with the side of the body, as you can see there. I've painted everything black. You can't bloody see anything now. And the next thing now is to fit this shroud over the top. So that's going to go just like that. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we're going to put a drop of cement in there so it capillaries around. And I'll put another one in there. That should capillary around. Just put a drop in that corner. And there we are. So that is now step 64 done. So we can cross off, cross off, cross off, cross off. That's all that done. And now we're on to, we've done that one. So we're gonna add to some pipes here and then we're on to doing the tail rotor assembly and everything. And this is where I think I'm gonna call it a day um, because I need to do some more painting before I put these pipes and everything on. I need to get those pipes off the sprues, get them all cleaned up. I've got this here all pre-painted black and ready to go. So, um, yeah, it's going to come together quite quickly now, guys, because it's lots and lots of little bits and pieces 
but I will probably just do off camera. So I will see you back for part nine. Now I'm not sure it's going to be before this video goes out or after this video goes out, but I will be doing a review of some beautiful undercarriage legs for this as soon as they arrive, which it desperately, desperately needs. So um, I'll see you soon. Thank you for watching and I'll see you back for part nine, is it? I think this has been part eight, is it, or part seven? I can't remember now. I'll see you which for the next one, whatever it is. <laughs> Bye for now, guys.